So you need a new head unit, but which one should you pick? Car audio head units? Well, everybody knows that Kenwood's are bomb.com. Whoop whoop. Now, some of you may have brand loyalty, and that's okay. The thing is, as long as you don't buy a $20 head unit from eBay, you're going to be just fine. Stick with all the major brands like Sony and Kenwood and Alpine and JVC. They all have great products. One of the main things that you want to look for is Apple CarPlay and Android capabilities because the Apple CarPlay and the Android capabilities means that your phone is going to directly connect and link up to your car head unit. So the Apple CarPlay and the Droids follow a universal format so that everything is going to be the same across the brand. So in today's age of cell phone usage, it's very important to get a head unit that has a hookup for your microphone. So if you're using your Bluetooth capabilities or your text capabilities, that you'll want to have that. You also want to see if you want to use anything that has backup cameras unless you're like myself and are too lazy to hook up the backup cameras other options include satellite radio might be a feature or function that you're looking for so if you need to check off the boxes you can save a little money by checking off some of those features that you may or may not need another important feature on a radio that you want to be aware of is is it resistive or capacitive touch capacitive touch is like your modern day cell phones where it's like glass and it's very responsive resistive touch is actually where you actually have to physically push down onto the screen itself and it's kind of like the old school LCD screens so this radio has what they call resistive touch so the head unit I picked out is the Pioneer MVH 1400 and you can get this radio around 325 to 350 somewhere in that range and it is fantastic it has capacitive touch it has the droid and the Apple CarPlay it has reverse cameras it has microphone you can send text verbally listen to text by telling it to do so it's pretty fantastic man I don't know if I trust this modern greaser Kenwoods are so fresh that's all I want Kenwood that's it I don't care I just want a Ken Wood it's got the name Ken it's got the name Wood what else what else you want nothing don't listen to Modern Greaser, he don't know nothing. There's one thing Modern Greaser knows, and that is car audio. At the ripe age of 13, I was installing RF converters, amplifiers, and bandpass boxes in my mom's Saturn. You know why? Because I'm freaking cool. In this episode of Modern Greaser, we do all the hard work and pick out the best aftermarket radio for you. If you're like me, then you probably drive a beater that could really benefit from an upgrade in technology. On this, episode, on this episode of Modern Greaser, we are installing a radio in this 2007 Lexus RX 350. This is what they call a double DIN. A single DIN is half of this, but nowadays it's real popular. So there's two screws that come with your radio. There's a package for this side and two for that side. For this Lexus, the metric kit is actually this big, large piece that will go over the radio like that. So the metric kit that we're using is the 998159S. Basically just Go to Amazon, put your vehicle in, and make sure that it fits it. Doing the old school single DIN radio, or a cheap one, this would go underneath it to make up the space so you'd have a pocket. The harness that we're using is a TOY 1960. It's a Toyota Lexus 2000 to 2004, but it will fit our 07 Lexus. So just make sure you check all this fitment before you buy your parts. Nowadays, it's really easy to do that. So your radio is gonna have all these different colored wires, and then you're gonna have your harness that goes to the factory side of the vehicle, and all you have to do is connect those together. I highly suggest soldering them. How easy is it to install a radio so easy that my workbench is my washing machine? So all you're going to do is make sure that you have a good pair of wire cutters. The absolute best way of connecting two wires is holding them together like this, like they're sword fighting, taking and bending one over like that. You can see I'm kind of wrapping it around. So that is what you're going for. Now we need to add solder. So you can buy this at Home Depot. It's just your regular electrical solder. So the rest is self-explanatory. Purple and black goes to purple and black. Your soldering gun is gonna be so hot that it's actually gonna start melting the insulation on either side of the wire, and that's what you want. You want that copper wire to get red hot, essentially, so that you can stick the solder to it and then it melts in. Otherwise, you're gonna have what they call a cold solder joint. So you can see now, I'm actually touching the wire and that is a complete solder joint. If I was to be touching this wire to the soldering gun itself, then that's gonna leave you with a bad connection. But I actually touched this solder to the wire because that thing is blazing hot. Don't be using any crappy tape. Be sure to use Scotch Super 33 tape. This is the only kind of tape 
you want to use. The 99 cent tape will just fall off behind your dash and piss you off more. So a bunch of electrical tape will leave sticky residue, so I only put a band of tape here, a band of tape here, and a band of tape here to hold all these together. Make sure there's no solder joints that are sharp sticking through here that are going to ground out on anything else. So removing this radio is about as easy as you can get. You don't need this hook tool. I can actually take my fingers under here and pull this out with my bare hands, and I can actually pull this one out here with my bare hands. Oh, I've got this little tool here. You're probably going to scratch it more. The possibility of scratching this is probably easier than if you didn't use a hook tool pull it out and there's a connector here for your cigarette lighter which is already out and then you're going to get your socket and go in here and there is a 10 millimeter bolt on this side of the radio 10 millimeter bolt on that side of the radio pull those out come back here and you're just going to pull this radio out now you're going to have to shift this down into gear whoops set your parking brake i would suggest turning off the battery, but there's our radio. Simple as that. All we have to do now is unplug all the fun things back here and get this party started. There's one weird thing about this Lexus and that is this resistor here. And you're gonna actually have to put it between two wires after we disconnect this radio so that our climate control system actually functions properly. So we have to solder this baby in, tape it up because this is all gonna be live. So you don't want that touching any of the metal anywhere. So we have to wire that in. Okay, so the next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go unplug the negative terminal on our battery so that I can come through here and wire in our resistors to our climate control system. So you may see me working with my wedding ring on. This is actually a ceramic ring, the same ceramics that's in your spark plugs. It acts like an insulator. If you're wearing a ring that is highly conductive, such as gold, they're not gonna get that ring off your finger fast enough without it burning you really bad. You can go in through and do tendon damage and you might lose a finger. So your metric kit is gonna tell you exactly where to install the resistor and it comes with the resistor. All right, so now we just need to find the 12 pin connector and we're gonna take the nine and 10 pins and connect our resistor between the two. So over on the back here, our number nine and number 10 is a white and black pin. We're gonna strip this back and we're gonna put our resistor between the two. Please, please, please don't be the person that comes here and cuts these harnesses off. Leave all the harnesses intact, shove them in the back. There's no reason to cut a harness. All we're gonna do here is splice into it. Okay, all we did is we strip back the black and strip back the white. Mine are all gouged up because I'm not using the right, I'm too lazy to go get the right size stripper. But we're gonna put our resistor between the two, solder it in, we're good to go. All right, so that's what we're looking at. We are setting our resistor. The radio harness fits into, so this one fits in the back of the radio. We made our soldered connections here to our aftermarket plug and it plugs into this one. So, so on the factory harness, this plugs into the Lexus and it's for this Lexus. However, this is a non-factory amplified harness. So, so you can go through and bypass amplifiers. I've done them on SOBs and I'm sure you can easily do that on this Lexus. I was hoping to integrate the factory amp because the stereo sounds really good with this. Now I'm not sure if this is gonna do the trick, but I did find a factory amplifier integration um, and so this actually works for Toyotas with the JBL system and supposedly the Lexus, they're calling it the JBL system. It says nowhere in this car that's JBL. So that's why I went with the non-amplified route. Being that it's a Lexus, it's amplified. And so right now I plugged the radio in with this harness here, I wasn't getting any sound. So this little module here, so if you have that same issue, you spend $8 on a harness because it doesn't say JBL anywhere and you don't know if it's factory amplified they make this one here. So this should do the trick because it's called the turn on. I'm getting ready to turn it on. This is a TYTO 01, the turn on. So this will hopefully go through. You can actually set the gain on it and things like that. All we're gonna have to do with this is wire this up to our radio side of our aftermarket radio within the addition of adding in a few ground power and things like that to it. So this is a USB extension that runs behind your dash. I ran it along the floor so I can plug my iPhone into it here. This is your mic on this side here. So our microphone that is up here actually plugs in with this basic mic connector here. It says MIC right on the back. Right here next to it would be where you plug in your pack connector if you had the right pack connector to hook up your steering wheel controls and program those. And then pretty much everything else is aftermarket stuff. There's an aux input if you wish to have that, all your amplifier uh, nonsense. And the last thing here is your antenna. There are two of them back here. You need the bigger one. Obviously one fits, so you don't need any adapter for this. This just hangs out because we're not hooking up, I'm assuming satellite radio for that. Um, but you can get satellite radio for these decks with a different antenna and things like that. Deck meaning radio, 
and that's pretty much it. So we're gonna plop this in. I already tested it, all the AC controls work, but it is quite a mess back here. So on this 2000 Alexis, this trim bezel where the gauges are actually pops out. There's a couple little plastic clips, so you can just literally take your fingers, pull it out, and you can take your microphone, run it behind your gauges here, down behind the radio, and I'm gonna take my little microphone, bring it from underneath here, and mount it right there, so that it's right where you're talking, right in the nice spot there. And actually, it comes with a little glue pad. Just make sure it doesn't move with the steering wheel controls, because this goes up and down every time you take the key out of the ignition. Just as I expected, Mega Fail on the 3M adhesive strip. Not only is it white and terrible, it looks like you have a disgusting band-aid on your dash. Ooh, get that out of here. Get yourself some black weather strip adhesive. This stuff is so handy. Anytime you break a clip or something happens, this stuff is great and it's removable. So I'm gonna put a little dab on there. It's black, it matches the dash and you can pull it off anytime in the future. So this is the actual Pioneer radio. As you can see, it's got a nice chrome trim ring around it. It's got some of your basic stuff for your stations here. What's really nice is that you can have your Bluetooth that can be hooked up to your cellular phone. So there's two things you can do with this. You can actually hook up the charging cable to your phone and plug it in. It works a little bit better with that. You can use your maps and all your fun things that way. Or you can hook up to Bluetooth and it'll play music and do some of the same things that way. It's a little bit better with it plugged in like I said. And also having two phones, my wife's and myself, it makes it a little bit easier. Right now I have it connected to my phone. So we're gonna see how this goes here. This is the Apple CarPlay. So it gives you a nice little map where we are, where the house is. Oh, maybe I'll play some music and see what kind of music is gonna be coming on if I have anything set up in here. So it's a really nice setup. Um, we have, you can look at your library on here for Spotify or you can have uh, Christmas. Who doesn't love Christmas songs, right? Uh, so you can have all your wonderful things on here, your maps, you can go to destinations, you can go to your Spotify, you can go to your phone here. It can send you texts, it can send you, oh, I'm calling my wife inside, she's gonna love that. Um, you can say, send a text. Sam. Poop. So you can hands-free send text. It's a little microphone here, so that's capable. But this, this stereo is fantastic, and I know the Apple CarPlay is Part of what makes it great you can see right here with the apple carplay all the different things it's pretty much like having an iphone now i don't have an android to show you how this works uh, you can have your regular radio and all those different features on it that you want but it's pretty fantastic now so there's a few different versions of this radio there's a factory amplified and a non-factory amplified system this one i bought the harness for thinking that it was a non-factory amplified system went to hook everything up everything works perfectly radio comes on does what it needs to do but there's no sound. So you either have to find a way to bypass the factory amplifier or they make another harness that bypasses it for you. So thank you for tuning in yet again to another episode of Modern Greaser. The only reason I decided to do this vehicle is because it was so much more difficult than a regular car. Back in the day, I used to time myself on how fast I could put radios in. I got a Dodge Neon down to five minutes, actually less than five minutes, because they had the old harnesses where you just plug them in, play. It was two 10 millimeter bolts, you pull them out, boom, 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 in and done. So. Uh, this has taken me a couple hours actually to get this and figure it out because I wanted to make sure since it's tied into the car's climate control system and you're putting a resistor between two wires, connecting two wires that are wrong is a big mistake. So I took a lot of time, made sure everything was correct, make sure you knew the same thing. And if for some reason those were two different things, you could have totally fried something bad. You know, there's airbags, there's all kinds of stuff. The old Dodges used to have the uh, airbags that were tied in the radio. And you'd actually have to take the factory radio and put it in the trunk and run a long harness all the way to the trunk, I kid you not. So there's lots of weird bugaboos out there with vehicles. Um, so I took my time making sure I did this the right way and having a lot of experience and it took me so long to do this, it really shouldn't have taken that long, but I'm pretty meticulous and I'm not gonna go screw up my wife's car. If you do this wrong and you don't install the resistor you'll actually get a notification in your car saying the ac won't work so you got to have that 68 ohm resistor in there for your ac to work and in the right spot so don't go connecting any two wires together with the resistor unless you triple check double check quadruple check five duple check anyways go through and make sure that you check all the stuff a million times before you go connecting anything anyways be sure to subscribe and catch you next time on the next episode of modern research man